So hello everyone and hope you all are doing good. So I recently gave my FRCR step one that is on 6th and 7th of June and I received my results yesterday that is 28th and I've passed in both the exams. So I was planning to release this book on radio physics where I've shared uh, useful insights and all my preparation tips and I'll be discussing about this book uh, in this particular uh, video. So starting with the FRCR physics first so here i have listed out few important problems that i feel are generally faced by the students preparing for these exams and uh, in this particular slide i'll be discussing uh, those problems in detail and the solution to it and later on i'll be uh, uh, discussing why i am proposing the book i am uh, about to release so the first important problem that i feel uh, 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 are faced by the students is understanding the concepts of radio physics. So unlike anatomy, uh, radio physics doesn't come in our daily practice. So it is uh, best to start as early as possible that is in first year of residency so that second and third year can actually build on those concepts. So it needs multiple readings because each reading you realize something different. Second thing we need to actually uh, practice uh, even physics in our daily uh, clinical uh, practice that how how we can do that is because uh, for example if we are reducing aliasing in a in a particular Doppler ultrasound uh, what all we do to reduce that aliasing why do we press that particular button and uh, what is the novelology uh, in in x-rays how do we what are the kvp and mas that are set for a normal x-ray and how how is it adjusted what is the use of a grid all these things we can actually question and ask our technicians and also learn from them as to how they do it and why do they do the things they do and also teach them uh, by reading ourselves so all these things uh, all these practices will help us improve our physics uh, from our first year itself in second and third year we can again uh, read on those concepts and build on those concepts Second important thing in understanding the physics is to read it from a correct source. So in first year, because we are very confused as to which book to actually read, uh, we tend to read many uh, concepts and many books. The important thing is if we actually select a very good conceptual book from the beginning itself, it will help us to clear not only MD, DNB exams, but also FRCR exams as well. Second important problem then is uh, that there are various online and offline resources for physics and buying and reading them all is difficult and time consuming but at the same time they all offer a particular concept and they have something to help you in your exams. So what to do then? So we need a compilation of all these various online and offline resources and someone to actually guide us through it. The third important problem that I feel is which I have seen commonly in uh, students is they go very deep uh, into a particular concept of X-ray or ultrasound or CT or MRI, MRI particularly because it is so vast and extensive. So what we have to remember uh, here is that in FRCR physics exam particularly and not only uh, FRCR exam but also in MD and DNB exam being the jack of all trades is better than being master of one that is if you read all MRI physics ultrasound x-ray equally it is better than reading only one particular concept of uh, x-ray physics or MR physics so we are actually radiologists and not physicists so we need to understand that and uh, we have to understand the concept properly to solve the questions and uh, uh, help us in our clinical practice. We, we should not go very deep into it. Fourth uh, problem that I have seen is uh, students dwelling too much into controversial topics or controversial concepts. Some of the questions are answered different, uh, differently in different sources. And students keep on asking these questions in various platforms and ways that they're, they're, uh, 
the time it's precious time we can read other concepts and uh, finish off the entire thing rather than just focusing on this controversial concept which are actually not going to be of any significant uh, impact on your score because everyone will get it uh, wrong the last important thing is seeking help of a person so even i had this particular problem uh, because there is no one to guide you as such through this physics radio physics we can keep asking our questions but no one is a physicist here to actually answer all your questions all your queries all the time so uh, but if you believe uh, just remember that uh, what i feel is if you work hard enough you don't need anyone to guide you through all of this you just have to work hard and focus on the concepts so these are the problems that i feel are usually faced by the students preparing for the exam so what all i have covered in my book and how i have addressed the issues that i have mentioned is i have uh, put forth true and false questions from various sources that are available offline as well as online and the answers are present along with their explanations wherever necessary this will help for the frcr exams definitely the second important thing is key concepts this is my own personal key concepts that i have built uh, of course they are also taken from various books and videos but it is the game changer because it covers all the important concepts which are required to pass the exams in each and every particular topic that is ultrasound mri x ray uh, fluoroscopy nuclear medicine all of them they have some key concepts that i have given and these key concepts are actually helping us solve all the questions if we remember these key concepts only we will be able to solve most of the questions uh, that are coming up in the frcr exams and also it will help you understand the concepts better and uh, uh, answer your mda and dnb exams so for example uh, regarding ultrasound uh, if you take all these particular statements that the doppler shift frequency does not depend on the depth of the object or vessel maximum velocity that can be measured in pulse doppler is limited by the depth of the vessel or the object there is a maximum velocity that can be detected in any doppler ultrasound as the bulk modulus of the medium increases the velocity of the sound increases as the compressibility of the material increases the velocity of the sound increases as the frequency of the sound waves increase the velocity of the sound uh, increases in the tissue so considering all these statements which one of this is true which is false that is all based on one key concept which i'll be discussing in my next slide then another important thing that i have included in my book is a sample paper which covers all the concepts that are to be uh, this particular paper i want you to do before uh, solving my book and then after solving my book so this is the key concept that i was talking about that is uh, about nyquist limit which states that our uh, sampling frequency must be double uh, of the maximum doppler shift and uh, from that particular concept we take out these two equations hence maximum velocity that can be measured in a pulse doppler is dependent on the depth of the vessel because it depends on the prf while the maximum doppler shift is independent because here there is no prf that is coming this is independent of the depth of the vessel second important thing this nyquist limit is only applicable in pulse doppler not in continuous doppler so hence not all dopplers have a maximum velocity continuous doppler does not have a nyquist limit then speed of the sound uh, that is equal to frequency into wavelength and also it is uh, root under bulk modulus divided by density of that particular medium or material through which the sound is propagated so basically if the frequency changes the wavelength adjusts to keep the speed constant it doesn't change with the frequency second thing the uh, velocity of the sound is dependent on the bulk modulus of that particular medium so as the bulk modulus increases the velocity of the sound increases and as the density increases of the medium the velocity of the sound decreases so now if the compressive they ask about compressibility the more compressible the material is the less is its bulk modulus and hence uh, the less is the speed 
So this is how they frame the questions. The same questions or same concept will be asked in a different way. Now, so now coming to my tips regarding this particular exam, uh, the concept remained the same. The wordings of the questions change in every session. One. Second, read the questions correctly because they usually play with the units like 25 kV will be given as 25 volts and you'll get it wrong because the mind will read it as 25 kV. So hence it is very important to be calm and not to panic uh, so that we can avoid such silly mistakes and the questions that we already know the answer to. Don't bother about new core physics questions. They won't affect your score in any case. And secondly, they will not be very different because the concepts, they don't change uh, that much in every session. Only the questions keep changing. You just have to pass the exam, which will happen if you understand the concepts, important concepts. You don't have to become a physicist. Now, uh, how to order uh, this particular book that I am releasing? This It will be available on order next week and the WhatsApp number I have already displayed. And you have to send your name, your college or hospital name, your full address, which is very important, and the number of copies that are required. Everything else will be sent to you on the WhatsApp. So finally, talking about FRCR anatomy exam. So uh, anatomy exam, I feel uh, is changing very drastically from what it was. Because now the questions like distal end of radius, proximal end of ulna, all these things are asked very less. And uh, usually they are more interested in angiographies, DSAs and musculoskeletal ultrasound and MRI. So it is better to uh, actually uh, practice uh, while practicing itself you look into all that atlas and uh, all the anatomy in your residency itself so that you are well versed uh, by the time uh, you are giving this exam so uh, uh, and frc and anatomy has various sources online as well as offline to be followed uh, which uh, are available and are quite uh, useful